Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. This is part two, so be sure to check out part one on Clark Danger's channel so you don't miss any lessons. Watch the video to the very end to discover 10 lessons that will help you make better decisions. Lesson 12, The Focusing Illusion. Nothing in life is as important as you think it is while you're thinking about it. Daniel argues that education is an important determinant of income, but it is less important than most people think. Humans absolutely suck at judging the value of future events. When you focus on education as an income booster, you neglect many other factors that determine income. What about the time you could spend self-educating yourself with books like Rich Dad Poor Dad? What about your country's economy, tax rates, debt, living expenses? The list goes on. Lesson 13, Optimism Bias. It's a bias that causes a person to believe that they are at less risk of experiencing a negative event compared to others. It's reassuring to believe our new idea or product will make us a millionaire. No one wants to show their lack of confidence when the stakes are high. For example, if a client asks you to film a professional wedding video and you know you don't have the time or resources to do so, Optimism Bias says that you accept the offer with the belief that you can do it even if you can't. Lesson 14, Utility Theory. You could have two candidates who are willing to accept a salary of $50,000, but they won't be equally satisfied because their reference points are different. Jenny currently earns $30,000, whereas Bobby earns $40,000. Jenny is likely to be more satisfied because relative to what she's already earning, she'll be earning more than Bobby. Jenny's utility is therefore higher. Lesson 15, Distinction Bias. It's a tendency to perceive two options as more different when evaluating them together as opposed to separately. So an experiment was ran where people had to price sets of dinnerware. Set A contained 40 items with nine of them broken and set B contained 24 pieces with none of them broken. It is assumed that items in both sets are of equal quality. So which set is worth more? When people looked at both sets together, they valued A at $32 and B at $30. When the sets were looked at in isolation, people valued A at $23 and B at a whopping $33. It's like walking into a bar alone. Sally over there may rate you a 7 out of 10, but when you walk into the bar with your less attractive friend Johnny, she may rate you 9 out of 10 because now she has a point of comparison. The 16th lesson is regression to the mean. So a soccer player like David Beckham might score 4 goals every game. The last three games he's scored four, but in his fourth he only scored two. It's tempting to say David didn't play as well this game, but things naturally regress towards the mean. That is, things average out in the long run. Another example is a local business income. Jerry's bait shop might earn $7,000 in the first five months of the year, and then on the sixth month, it drops to $2,000. It might appear the business is doing poorly, but things tend to regress towards the mean. This principle says that Jerry will probably earn higher in the following months to average out the total earnings of each month to $7,000. This isn't the best example, but hopefully you see what I'm getting at. Lesson 17, Hindsight and Outcome Bias. I see this all the time. So it's where you see an event as having been predictable despite there being little or no chance of predicting it. For example, the weather forecast for the day suggests a 50% chance of rain. Ben says to Sally, let's go to the beach. Sally says, I have a feeling it will rain, but okay. So they pack their things and head to the beach. 30 minutes later, it starts to rain. So Sally shouts, see Ben, I told you it would rain. Sally has been afflicted by hindsight bias. She believes she knew it all along, despite it being almost impossible to predict the weather. If it didn't rain, she probably wouldn't have said anything. Outcome bias is a similar phenomenon. It's an error made in evaluating the quality of a decision when the outcome is already known. Perhaps I go to the local market and a merchant tries to sell me a golden lamp for $5,000. I don't know the true value of it, but the merchant promises me I'm getting a really good deal. Something doesn't feel right and $5,000 is a lot of money to put at stake. I decide to YOLO it and hand over the cash. I've got this horrible feeling, but I return home and get a price evaluation from a professional. He says the lamp is worth $20,000. Wow, I say to myself, I made a great decision. I knew it. But just because I made a large profit doesn't mean it was a good decision. It was pretty stupid to fork out $5,000 on something I knew nothing about. I was afflicted by the outcome bias. Moving on to lesson 18, the halo effect. And no, it's not the video game. Our impression of someone or something influences how we evaluate the characteristics of people or things. For example, who do you think has smoked a concentrated dose of the psychedelic drug dimethyltryptamine? This guy? Or this gentleman? The answer is the gentleman named Brian. 
I've never ingested a psychedelic compound in my life. Many people perceive me as a drug lord because of my dreadlocks and tie-dye shirt. The halo effect is at play here, and it plays in all facets of life. Whether you're a hiring manager looking for new employees, or on a dating site looking for your soulmate, be aware of your predisposition to make assumptions based on superficial impressions. Lesson 19, the illusion of validity. This is a cognitive bias in which a person overestimates his or her ability to interpret and predict accurately the outcome when analyzing a set of data, in particular when the data analyzed shows a very consistent pattern. So a stock picker invents a stock picking strategy on Monday. The following week, he makes more and more profit each day. He sees this as a reflection of his clever strategy, when in fact, it could simply be the natural fluctuations in the marketplace. A stock picker's blindness can be likened to the famous illusion below called the Muller Liar illusion. Our brain can't help seeing the lines as different links, even though they're the same. <laughs> Lesson 20, risk policies. Imagine a genie comes once a year to double your money every time you press a button. You can press the button as many times as you want, but with each button press, the chance of you losing everything increases by 1% each time. At what point do you stop pressing the button? It's easy to get greedy in the heat of the moment and keep pressing the button, even if the risk is high. A risk policy can help here because it helps you think long term. You could have a policy that once you press a button five times, you leave the game with your winnings. Risk policies can apply to how much warranty you decide to purchase with your new iPhone, how much you are willing to spend on travel insurance, or how much Mark Cuban is willing to offer to invest in your idea before the risk to reward ratio is no longer worth it in the long run. The final lesson is framing. Picture yourself in a hospital bed. You have cancer. Nancy the nurse comes in to tell you that you have a 50% chance of living. In the second scenario, Damo the doctor comes in to tell you that you have a 50% chance of dying. You're probably happier to hear that you have a 50% chance of living, even though both messages delivered the exact same news, but they were framed differently. Marketers understand and use framing to their advantage. If you were to sell a book with 12 chapters, you can increase the perceived value of the book by framing two of the chapters as a free bonus. Let's review the 10 lessons we covered in this video. The focusing illusion, optimism bias, utility theory, distinction bias, regression to the mean, hindsight and outcome bias, the halo effect, illusion of validity, risk policies, and framing. So which one of these biases have you seen in your own life? Feel free to drop a comment below, I read every comment.